Inspire TV. I'm your host, Tierney Cherie. Hopefully everyone is doing fine. Everyone is staying safe. Everyone's staying indoors. Um, obviously there's a lot going on, but of course the world still goes on and there's still stories that come out and things that need to be talked about. And this is one that I felt like uh, was very, very interesting. So many of you might remember um, a few months ago when Byron Allen was going on to a bunch of news um, outlets, going on to a bunch of media platforms and advocating for his lawsuit. It was a discrimination lawsuit and he was essentially suing Comcast um, for discriminate, discriminating against his company. And what he was trying to do was get a ruling in his favor in order to allow African Americans to um, claim discrimination against companies without having to prove that um, discrimination was the only factor inside of um, their cases or their lawsuits. Now, um, basically we got a ruling recently that um, was not favorable to back to Byron Allen, obviously was not favorable to a lot of African Americans who would similarly seek um, some type of redress um, from the court system if they are being discriminated against. So uh, I wanna read a part of the story and let's see. So the Supreme Court in a unanimous decision, unanimous, that meeting every single that's that's the part that got me every single justice voted this way um they unanimously decided that byron allen must meet higher thresholds for racial bias suit against comcast to survive um we're going to obviously talk a lot about the unanimous part because i think it's very interesting and telling that um this lawsuit was essentially thrown out, not just by the conservatives who were taught to um, vote out or taught to um, demonize, but it was also voted by the liberals, the ones who are supposed to have our interest in mind. Two judges the case hinged on a section of the Civil Rights Act of 1866 that holds that African Americans must have the same right to contracts as whites. A number of civil rights groups, including the NAACP's Legal Defense and Education Fund, sided with Allen in the case while the Justice of the Department of Justice supported Comcast's position. In a statement, Comcast said that they are pleased with the Supreme Court's unanimous restored unanimously restored certainty that the standard to bring and prove civil rights claims, the well-established framework that has protected civil rights for decades continues. The nation's civil rights laws have not changed with this ruling. They remain the same as before the case was filed. They added that we hope on remand that the Ninth Circuit will agree with the district court properly applied the standard in dismissing Allen's case three separate times for failing to state any claim. Um, the company has defended its diversity record and said that we will continue to look for ways to add even more innovative and diverse programming that appeals to our diverse viewership and continues our diversity. Diversity is like a key word in order to basically do away any culpability as far as discriminating against black people. You say, well, we're diverse. We care about diversity. But diversity, of course, doesn't necessarily mean black people. It can mean anyone that's not a white male. But as they say... Um, we are committed to diversity and inclusion efforts across our company. So here's something that I thought was interesting. So this is a unanimous decision. That means that not only the conservative justices, you know, the ones who the Democrats have been telling us, we have to make sure that Trump doesn't get back in the op in the in the presidential office because he's appointing judges and justices. Well, he also um Obama also appointed a number of those people who voted inside it with Comcast. And what essentially this really means is that if you want us to prove that you're being discriminated from by a company, um, you have to prove that the only reason that they're discriminating against you is that you are black. Now, of course, if you are trying to prove that you being black is a factor at all, that's very difficult to actually prove. I mean, it's one thing when someone harbors racism in their minds and their hearts and that motivates their actions and their actions um, reflect their internal feelings. 
But it's rare that someone will actually clearly say, I'm not going to give this to you because I'm black, because, because you're black. I do not like you because you're black. I'm going to keep this because you're black. So already proving race is a factor is always, always, always a difficult thing uh, to prove inside of these types of cases. However, where it becomes more difficult for now on is the fact that not only do you have to prove that it was a factor, meaning that this person has some type of racist animus, but that's the only reason, meaning you have to be clean. There cannot be any other possible reason why this person could be, disc could be um, discriminating against you. And that's almost impossible to prove. So the implications of this decision obviously are heavy and that's why byron allen was campaigning so heavily against um comcast and really waged out an all-out pr campaign i read that now that the supreme court has decided this way he's going to turn his attention to trying to getting some legislation passed um which basically means paying for some politicians to do the right thing or whatever but here's what here's what's interesting we know the implications of this decision for African Americans, and it will specifically affect African Americans. That's something to keep in mind. This is not something that's going to affect um, all people the same. This is actually an, an act from 1866 that pertains only to Black people. And every single justice, the liberals and the conservatives, all sided with Comcast and felt that Black people have to prove not only that race was a factor, which is already very difficult to prove, but that it's the only factor in discrimination, which makes these claims almost impossible to prove. This is very interesting, considering the fact that as it was a unanimous decision, this means that a lot of the justices who were told to us that they were going to fight for our rights are actually not there to do so. And of course, if you've been watching this channel, these things are not surprising, but it is telling that the Democrats have been tweeting this idea that we have to get Donald Trump out of the White House because if we don't, then we're going to get conservative judges and justices appointed to high courts. And these people in the instance of federal judges and the Supreme Court obviously are given lifetime uh, terms and therefore for that we have to do whatever we can to keep conservatives out of the White House and now we see that the liberal so-called liberal justices and judges are also voting the same way that the conservatives are judging whenever it comes to us whenever it comes to us that's where the line gets drawn so let's think about the fact that the people in the Supreme Court uh, two of them Justice Kagan Justice uh, Sotomayor were both voted in by President Obama, who was the first black president. And in particular, Justice Sotomayor, she's the first Latina uh, or Latino judge who was actually appointed to the high court. Yet to her, this discrimination lawsuit is something that she fell on the side of the idea that black people should have to prove that we are a hundred percent not being uh, that we are that any discrimination against us is the only reason for which we are um, kept out of certain positions. So the point that I'm trying to make in drawing these uh, contrasts of who's actually voting against us, and um, not only Justice Kagan and Justice Sotomayor, also Justice Ginsburg, who was tooted as being a feminist hero. Um, the point of this is to say that we have to understand that the United States of America never has never had a true and um, sincere agenda as far as assimilating African Americans or Africans in America into the United States. Now, if you are someone who is embrace, embraces your African culture and embraces your distinctiveness, this is something that is not a disappointment to you. However, if you are someone who believes that your ultimate salvation is for the United States to do, do good by Black people, to integrate us and assimilate us into the society, then you may be disappointed in this decision. Us who already were aware that this is the way that the country operates in regard to us, us who are already looking for ways to practice um, self-determination instead of trying to take in, partake inside of a system that has no regard for us, this decision does not do anything to us. But for you who are so convinced that the government is a sincere, um, is a, is a sincere 
position is, is in a sincere position to actually integrate black people into the United States, then this may be disappointing to you. Now, how do we know that this is the case? Because if you think about it, since um, Brown versus Board of Education, the United States government has been saying that, okay, we're, we're willing to integrate black people. I don't think there's ever been a complete, you know, effort to do so, but we're going to say that we're willing to do so. Um, but of course, the showing of what actually happened versus what they're saying, it's just, it just doesn't match up. So if we look at them saying, well, we're willing to integrate you into education. Well, if you look at the education system, the education system in America is based on property taxes. So if you're willing to integrate people only if you fall into a certain um, income margin and those people who are black are were historically deprived of that type of income, historically deprived of capital, and yet you're saying, well, we're willing to integrate you. Well, no, you're not willing to integrate. You're willing to tokenize some people, but you're not willing to integrate Black people into the American um, into the American landscape truly. And the same thing happens with the criminal justice system or injustice system, because it's not a justice system. We see that um, they say, well, we're willing to integrate you, but, you're, but they've never shown a true effort to have a system that is not based on racism, have a system that's not based on the criminalization of Black people. These are the things that show us that what they say and what they do are two different things. So I say all this to say that if you are disappointed in this decision, Hopefully this is a wake up call to you because I'm not disappointed because I just didn't have any hope in the system to begin with. But if you are disappointed, hopefully this is a wake up call to you. Again, the United States government has never had an intention of truly assimilating you into their their system. They have a system that's set up to benefit a certain class and they're willing to let a few people in in order to continue that uh, that beneficiary um, relationship, but they're not willing to completely let all of us in because in the eyes of this government, that would essentially derail the entire composition of the economy, which has been based on the exploitation of Black people. So if you are someone who has thought that, you know, um, America, this is the country that we live in, this is the country that we fight for, this is the country that is going to do right by us, I don't know Africa, I don't know anywhere else, but this is the document you live by. Understand that this country is reacting the same way that it's always reacted. The idea that someone put into your head that the United States would act differently, that was an idea not based on reason. Because if we're going to go by historic historical evidence, there's no evidence that the country was ever willing to allow black people into high positions. Think about that when we think about a lot of these movements that have risen up in the uh, last couple years that have taught taught you that you have no stake in Africa, but your only stake is in America. You have no stake in being African, but your only stake is in being American. Understand that being American has never applied fully to us. As Malcolm X said, if you are truly an American, you wouldn't have to go to court and fight in order to be considered an American. You would just be an American. You would just be born an American. And as we see, we still go to court and fight and we don't get the, um, the benefit of other people who have even gone to court to fight. Instead, even the people who are supposed to be on our sides are voting against us. So this is a telling thing, and I think it's a good lesson that we understand that this is not what these people are here for. This is not what the Democrats are here for. The people who fight so hard for the Democratic Party just, just keep in mind that Black people, we've been fighting for this party for a long time, and we've gotten nothing from it. And as we see in this instance, even the people who are supposed to be freedom for freedom of the freedom of people, they're only for the freedom of certain people. For some reason, we've been okay with the fact that Black people will always be last, and yet we've come to this irrational um, belief that at some point they're going to put us first. But again, what is that based off of? Is it based off of reason when the same thing has been happening continually? And that's where my biggest issue is with a lot of these movements, these, um, you know, Black people wave the flag and and you know you're you're not African, you're American. Is that if you're gonna make take those type of positions, take it based off of facts. Tell me something that has happened that makes you think that things are gonna change. Tell me some type of evidence that the government has shown. The, bur the burden is not on me to prove that America is gonna do right by Black people. The burden is on the government. The government has to prove that because, frankly, 
the fact that my people were brought here in chains, the fact that my people were used as the labor to build this economy, the fact that my people have been shut out through Jim Crow, through black through uh, black codes, through through the prison industrial complex, the burden is not on me to prove this country is willing to integrate us. So the burden is on the government. Show me something that the government has produced that has shown makes you believe that you're going to actually be treated like like an American anytime in the future. And of course, the answer is nothing. It's all based off of your hopes and based off of your irrational belief. I would even say it's based off of Stockholm Syndrome. You really believe that these people who have been beating you and, and oppressing you continually for all of history are going to turn around just because you say, hey, I'm an American and I'm a descendant of slavery and I, I, I'm a part of this. I built this country, so therefore you have to do right by me. If you believe that's going to be the changing factor, you are basing this completely on a lie. So stop being the victim. Start thinking like you want to be the person who's in a winning position. Tell me your guys' thoughts. Um, are you hurt? <laughs> are you disappointed? Or is this what you expected? I will see you guys in the next video.